Hi guys, Bobby Gass here. I just got in the door. What is this? 9 o'clock right now, 9 p.m. And there was something waiting in the... Waiting for me there. A package. Now this is from uh, Bobby Z. And uh, he texted me, what's today? Friday. He texted me Monday. I think it was Monday. And told me that the uh, package was in Toronto. And I expected to get it that day, Monday or at the worst Tuesday. And then Wednesday, I didn't get them. And then Wednesday, I hear uh, that there's a post office, a branch a sorting place in South Etobicoke, where I am, that's uh, under a COVID lockdown. So this box was locked in there for a couple of days uh, because of the COVID. Nobody was going in there. They had to disinfect it or whatever they do. And I've been busy, well, messing around with some shit I got. My poor old kid brother's got a, uh, a blood clot in his leg. <laughs> so uh, if I'm not really, really, you know, effervescent there, Bobby, uh, about the package, it's because of some shit going on in my life. <laughs> but I, I love this, right? I just took a knife. And I split it, and right now, and we're going to open her up and see what's in here. All right, let's open her up. Look at that box, Priority Mail. That's a nice box. I think I'll keep that one. Now look at this. <laughs> here's, here's a letter and something in there, but look what he's got. He wrapped them. Christmas presents. He told me. <coughs> I told him I didn't want him sending me nothing. All I wanted from him or any of you guys is a Christmas card. I mean, you guys, you know, picking music for me, you know, that ain't easy, believe me. <laughs> uh, so let's get into this. I, you know, he said I can put these under uh, the Christmas tree or open them now, whatever I want, right? But let's read the, he's got a note there. Let's read the note. Oh, there's something else in here. What's it say? Hi, Bobby. 2020. Hi, Bobby. I put a Christmas card <laughs> in here since you said you wanted one. LOL. Betty and I, I hope you enjoy this box. We love you, bro. Robert and Betty. <laughs> Christmas card, eh? Okay, let's see the Christmas card. Oh, look at that. It's peanuts or something. Hallmark. Oh, that's the envelope. There's the Christmas card. Snoopy. That Christmas. He didn't sign it. I'll be sending this back to him. <laughs> Unsigned. Oh no, I, I had an old trick. I used to take old Christmas cards from the year before or whatever and I would take the and reuse them. I'd scratch out the name, you know, from somebody or some someplace and I'd write my name at the bottom and even use the same envelope sometimes. <laughs> Just for a laugh, right? <laughs> and people get a kick out of it. All right, let's see what's in the box. Where will I put this letter? Oh, we'll put it up there. I'm going to open these up. Hey, Merry Christmas. Oh, it's a t-shirt. He asked me what size I was. I told him I'm a triple X. Arizona Tucson Arizona Wildcats. Um, has it got a number on it? No. Arizona Wildcats. Who the hell are they? And this is an old t-shirt actually. A very old t-shirt. All of the paint on it is all crackly and stuff like that, right? So this is one of Bobby's old t-shirts. Why, are you a triple large too, Bobby? You a big boy? Yeah, that'll fit me. 
Well, shit. Let's see. Don't mind the skin, guys. Oh, this is nice soft cotton, too, eh? No smell. Uses some sort of a... There you go. Wildcats. I wonder who the Wildcats are. Hockey team? Football? I like the t-shirt. Gray? Blue? I like blue. <coughs> Let's pick up my t-shirt. And put that on the back of my chair. There we go. I need a puff, guys. All right. Let's see what's in this one. He's really got this one wrapped up. This must be breakable or something. I don't get Christmas presents, not many anyhow. <laughs> I asked him for some cactus seeds. I like cactuses. There, I'll show you mine. I bought cactuses for my kid brother a little while ago. Cost me like $160. There's the cactus. I bought three little ones and two big ones. No, four little ones. I gave him three little ones. He gave two of them away already. And I gave him two big ones and he, he broke one or the raccoons broke one. And this one here I went and took myself because the other two big ones I gave him were of the same type of plant but they were only yay high, right? And this one, when I got it, it was half the size now. And it's grown in the three months, you know, twice as big, eh? I'm really good with cactuses. I can grow cactuses. Anyhow, I told him to send me some cactus seeds. This was before I got the cactuses. And <laughs> he don't think he can send them in the mail. Might be against the law or something, right? The hell is this, Bobby? Oh, he's still got it wrapped up really good here. What the hell is this? Oh, it looks like a jar of some kind. <laughs> what the fuck? Prickly pear cactus jelly. I guess that's like the jam. Well, I'll be t I'll, t I'll test test that in the morning. Six bucks too, eh? Prickly pear cactus jelly. Ah, it's red. I like jellies and jams. <laughs> Groovy. <laughs> I got hang on, guys. I gotta blow my nose. I got my pop's nose. It's always leaking. Dad always had a wet hanky in his back pocket. He had the the drippy nose on the uh, the sneezies. <laughs> that might have been all the years he spent in the in the war when it was really really cold, and you know they didn't have a lot of heat there. Them soldiers in the winter time back in the forties in Europe when they were fighting the Germans. <laughs> Are fighting the Nazis, I should say. <coughs> All right, what else we got here? He asked me if I still collected 45, so I imagine there's, there's 45s in here, right? Eh? Yeah, that's this is 45, sir. Man, is he gonna wrap this shit up good? <laughs> Don.
John Henley. I don't know. He's, in, he's got these in these little packages. I can't open them up right now. I gotta make some room here. Next one up here. Oh, this is an older one. What the hell is this? Dominico Modugno. Now blue, the pinto, the blue. And on the flip side is. Meridi and Sita. What the hell? <laughs> I heard that the label. I don't know, Z. I'll have to check that one out. Molly Hatchet, Satisfied Man. I used to have their first album, and I, uh, who did I send that to? I think I sent that to somebody. Yeah, I know I did. Dolly Parton, Hey Lucky Lady. Everybody likes Dolly. I remember when she was on the Porter Wagner show, the old country show. She left him, you know, to become more famous. Here's a, here's a promo copy, Santana. Well, all, all right, Santana on Columbia. Promo copy. Todd Rundgren, something to fall back on, promotional promo copy. Yeah, white label promo, Todd Rundgren. Steppenwolf, another promo copy. Smoky Factory Blues. Smoky Factory Blues, Smoky Factory Blues. I can't recall that one, but I, you know, I know it. I know all their music, right? You too, with or without you. I think I have that on the album. Stevie Winwood, Hearts of Fire. I saw him with traffic in, uh, when was that, 69 or 70? Oh, I forget. And yes, Love Will Find a Way. I've seen these guys at one of the Beggar's Banquet concerts, the three of them I, I attended. And they were, I think that was 1970. And they were very proggy, and, and, and the the, uh, the crowd, the hippie crowd, they weren't into the prog just yet, and, you know, in them years, it come a little later on. But, you know, I grooved them. Of course, I was, I think I was smoking opium at this gig. <laughs> Humble Pie was there with Steve Marriott and the other guy, uh, I, I forget his name now. And who else was on that? Hawkwind was on that gig too, and uh, I think Black Sabbath closed it out actually. All right, let's get some more 45s here. Merry Christmas. Shit. What the hell is he? Okay. A promo copy. Good morning, Judge. 10 CC. Sending me a lot of promo copies here. 10 CC. It doesn't matter at all. Another promo copy. 10 CC again. Picture disc or, or picture, picture sleeve. The things we do for love. Backed with hot to trot. Thirty-eight special chain lightning. Chain lightning, both sides. So this is gonna be another promo copy. Yep. Yeah. Another promo copy. It's a lot of promos you're sending me here, Robert. The Greg Allman Band, I'm No Angel. And on the flip side, Lead Me On. 
Those almond brothers were great. They really were, weren't they? <coughs> Bachman Turner Overdroid. I can't stand them guys. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. And freewheeling. That's not a Mercury label. That's, well, that's an English Mercury label. I never was a fan of Randy Bachman. I just thought he was uh, commercial. Blood, sweat, and tears. Mono. This is another promo copy. I can't move no mountain. David Clayton Thomas was the lead singer with Blood, Sweat, and Tears, and I used to see him in the early 60s with the Shays and the Boss Men, and I'm pretty sure I seen him when he did a gig with the uh, the Rogues, the Five Rogues that later became the Mandela. That day there was two singers, and when I seen them, a girl asked me to take her to the high school dance uh, at Oakwood Collegiate, and they had two lead singers. And one guy was a great dancer, and the other guy had a great voice. It was uh, David Clayton Thomas with the voice, and the great dancer was, uh, oh Christ, uh, the guy who was always singing for the Mandela and, and, and uh, the Rogues. Right now I forget his name. <laughs> Here's uh, another promo copy, uh, the Blue Oyster Cut, called Born to be Wild. Really, I don't know that one. Born to be Wild by them, eh? Oh, that'll be interesting to check that one. At least I can't recall it. I might have heard it. Blue Oyster Cult again. Another uh, promo. Uh, Cities on Flame with Rock and Roll. Cities on Flame with Rock and Roll. Another promo. Plug Side Stereo. It says on one side here. And this is full circle, the birds. So plug side, meaning this one here would be a, a promo too. Jesus, Bobby's sending me all this, this promo stuff. Here's the last package. Let's see if there's anything else in there. Nope. Just an empty box. Last one. Last Christmas present. Yeah, I need a knife. little tiger huh. what's this union Chato and his African percussion safari jungle drums variations I like jungle drums it's rather strange a picture sleeve with the Union Label Company sleeve. Hmm. Neat. I like that. I like this label. I don't I don't know if I I don't think I have a Union Red label. Where the hell was this printed or made? Uh, let me check this out, guys. Give me a country here, guys. Japan. It's a Japanese one. Well, I guess with the writing. <laughs> I think I have one other Japanese record. 
you know, printed in Japan. Um, you know, Canada, United States kind of guy. Oh, here's another Japanese something or other. What is it? Another strange looking label. Victor. What's the record? Oh, the Three Bells. Oh, the Three Bells. I love that, uh, that band. They had, what the hell's the name of the song they had I used to love all the time? Yeah, this is the Browns, the Three Bells by the Browns. Oh, this is a great song. I mean, a really great song. This is another Japanese pressing, too. Fabulous. Best one so far, for me, anyhow. Three Bells. Used to hear that all the time when I was a young fella. I really liked that, actually. Nice one there, Bob. Joe Cocker, Sweet Little Woman. Promotion copy. Up Where We Belong. Joe Cocker. Boy, he was quite the drunk, Joe was. There was my cousin, you know, later on his, in his career, you know, when he, he got to be really messed up before he got lost. My cousin was... Uh, <clears throat> drove several hundred miles to see him in New Brunswick and Joe was so drunk <laughs> that the guys had to hold he kept falling down on stage and the guys had to come out the roadies and one guy hold him up by one elbow and another guy hold him up by another elbow and hold him in front of the mic <laughs> even with the two guys holding up he still kept falling down on the stage and forgetting the words and shit like that people booed him pretty good <laughs> but that was Joe Cocker actually Jennifer Warrens did a song, a hit song, with uh, a duo singer with Joe. And Jennifer Warrens is a singer that likes to do duets with other famous singers. And she wanted to do one with Joe for a while, and she was looking for him, and she couldn't find the guy. You know, agency, stuff like that. So she actually got a detective agency to look for him throughout the world. And they found him a year and a half later, and he was actually driving a cab in London. And uh, she contacted him, or her people contacted him, give him the money to fly over to New York. And uh, they did that song, Up Where We Belong, I think it is with the two of them, where they did that. And that was Joe Cocker's career started all over again, eh? But imagine that, somebody with his money, you know, during the rock and roll years, I guess he spent it all on drugs and his buddies, because that's the way shit was in the rock and roll scene back. And then I was in the music business, because I know a little something about it. Not stadium gigs. I wasn't that big. But, uh, you know, rock and roll back in the late 60s and early 70s was all about drugs, sex and drugs and rock and roll. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> what else we got here? Holly Holly, Neil Diamond on a uni. A promo copy. I actually have this, but not a promo copy. I've played this, actually. Holly Holly on uh, one of my things. I love the label, the uni labels, or you sleeves, I mean. I love the uni sleeves and the uni uh, labels, too. Mad Man Across the Water by Elton John. That's that's on a uni uh, label, and I like that one. Here's another demonstration uh, promo copy, Neil Diamond. September Morn. And one side, both sides. One's mono and the other will be stereo. Uh, we got four or five left here. Well, here's another Neil Diamond. Another promo copy on Uni. And the singer sings his song. Until it's time for you to go. Neil Diamond. My pop liked Neil Diamond. There was only two young artist that my old man ever liked and Neil Diamond was one he actually paid big money to see him down at some large venue down at Toronto took his his uh, girlfriend down there uh, to see him and the other person was Elvis Presley and that was real early I remember asking dad you know because he didn't like rock and roll he was a country and western guy and I said to him pop how come uh, you know you like Elvis and you don't like nobody else and he says, because he can sing. 
Uh, the Doobie Brothers, another promo copy, depending on you on one side and depending on you on the other. The Doobies. A Doobie to me is... Speaking about Doobies, i got to have another cigarette. No cactus seeds, eh, Z? Wouldn't take a chance. <laughs> England Dan and John Ford Coley. Nights are forever without you. Another promo. One side stereo, the blue. And the white would be uh, the mono. Glenn Fry, another eagle. What's this called here? Oh, I can't read it. It's in red. Smuggler's Blues. New Love. Smuggler's Blues. That's not a bad tune. And last but not least, Don Henley, Dirty Laundry. I don't think this one's a promo. And on the flip side is Lila. Don Henley, Dirty Laundry. Well, thanks, Z. <laughs> Z's channel, he's, uh, he's not going to be doing as many videos as he was. He wasn't doing any anyhow, that many anyhow, really. You know, he hadn't been feeling it the last, oh, I don't know, a year or two, uh, two years, maybe even longer than that now. But a lot of guys, that happens to a lot of guys. But like I tell y'all, <coughs> this venue, you use it. You don't let it use you. You don't feel obligated. I mean, you do in a sense a little bit, but you got to watch that obligation thing. Anyhow, guys, later. Bobby Gass signing off. Thanks, see.